Hey, this is Emily Striegel. Welcome to episode 670 of the Talking Metal podcast. Somehow, Mark has convinced me to take a shot at a solo music-only show. So I hope you'll enjoy what I have up my sleeve for you today. Of course, the podcast, we've been around for, gosh, over 12 years now, and it's always evolving. So I'm excited that um, Mark has been involving me a little bit more. I'm doing some interviews and providing some content, which is exciting. It's new for me, and I'm excited that you guys have been very welcoming. And so I hope you enjoy the show today. So I'm a little bit younger than Mark, so I think, you know, when I got into metal, it was a little bit later in the game, like our favorite bands or the bands that like made an impact on us are kind of different. So the first album that changed my life was Appetite for Destruction. And that's solely, I think, based on, you know, my age and, you know, where I was when that album came out as far as coming of age and, and growing up. So I, you know, I'd always been into Rat and Quiet Riot, and I would hear these bands that were up and coming on the Sunset Strip, and was very into that. But when Appetite came out, I'm not the only one. Everything changed for me, and so I never got to see them on that tour. I was still a little bit young to be going to shows, but my first hard rock metal show was uh, Cinderella on the Long Cold Winter Tour. I was a big Cinderella fan because I felt like I wasn't into bands like Poison or Bon Jovi really, like any of the like really slick, poppier stuff. I was into the more bluesy stuff. Like if it had a little bit of grit and blues, Cinderella to me was, you know, they still had some of that um, glam side, but they were also had some grit and some blues to them. So I really dug um, Cinderella a lot because of that. Still like them a lot. So my first show I I ever went to was Cinderella, and I was this tiny little pipsqueak, probably about 70 pounds, and Lynch Mob was opening, so I decided I wanted to be right up front. This was my first concert, and I didn't know what general admission meant. All I knew was, wow, I can just be in the front. So kind of worked my way up to the front before the show started. I'm getting, you know, cigarettes ashed on my head. Like this is, I'm like, where am I? But this is going to be fun. This is great. And as soon as the lights went down, it was that rush, like that surge of people pushing forward, that wave of, (laughs) and little tiny uh, girl from rural Indiana was scared to death. And, um, you know, the lighters are all lit up and it's dark and the music rolls. And um, I think I lasted maybe one song before security guards realized that I was in a panic and um, (laughs) pulled me right over the the guards, the barrier. And I, I watched the rest of the show from the sidelines, but still had an amazing time. And so the first song I'm going to play for you is off of Long Cold Winter. And um, the opening track, here we go. So that was Cinderella, Bad Seamstress Blues into Falling Apart at the Seams, one of my favorite tracks off that album. And so, you know, moving on, let's let's think about what I want to play next here. So when I got into like middle school, I really got into more of the thrash metal um, bands, like the big four, um, Metallica and Justice for All was, you know, again, it's like this kind of where you are in your life um, when you get turned on to certain bands. For me with Metallica, it was Injustice for All, and then I kind of went backwards from there. And same thing went for Megadeth. So I've always taken a lot of heat because I am a huge fan of Countdown to Extinction. And I know it was a big, huge commercial success for them, but some of the hardcore fans pick on me because it was a little bit more slick. But I I like the slick production because it was this slick production and these pretty melodies, but at the same time, Mustaine still had this kind of menacing vocal. And again, I went back and, you know, got into the earlier Megadeth, of course. But, you know, fun fun fact for me, um, I used to go to a lot of shows by myself 
um, in New York City. I just didn't have, I dated guys that weren't into metal and I, a lot of my friends were not into metal and the same stuff I was into. So I would go to shows by myself and I saw Megadeth right after 9-11 at Irving Plaza. I don't know if any of you were at that show, but if you were, it was very, very powerful. And Mustaine was, you know, he came out for the encore with his signature flying V that had like a American flag on it. And the audience just went crazy. There were like flags like popping up from the pit. It was one of those just like your hair standing on end kind of moments. So um, yeah, I have a really soft spot in my heart for Megadeth in general, but especially Countdown to Extinction. So I'm going to play next for you one of my favorite tracks off this album, which is Foreclosure of a Dream. That was Megadeth, Foreclosure of a Dream. And, you know, as I mentioned before, I went to a lot of metal shows by myself. And um, I remember my mom always being so concerned, saying, you know, are you safe? You know, she was always so worried. And I have to say, I've never felt more safe than I did at these metal shows because these guys, these other metal fans, guys and girls, but I felt like they were always looking out for me. It's like somehow they were aware that, okay, this chick's here by by herself. She's a metal fan. She's one of us. It was like this kind of sisterly thing where I felt like they all took care of me. These metal dudes, these big, burly metal dudes, you know, I was never, ever felt threatened or objectified at a metal show. Ironically, like the only show, there have been a couple shows where, you know, I, someone's like grabbed my ass. Like it's never been a metal show. I remember one show in particular going with these girlfriends. And it was Jet. Do you remember that band? They were terrible. Seeing them at the Roseland or something. Those were the, those were the shows where I felt afraid um, or nervous around dudes. The metal shows by myself never felt more confident. So kudos to you metal dudes who are looking out for me at these shows when I was there by myself. And luckily, um, soon enough, I met this nice dude named Mark Striegel and, um, (laughs) and, uh, I think our very first date, I don't think he even had a couch, but we sat on the floor of his apartment and he just started pulling out like vinyl, like old school, like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest putting on all the vinyl and I'm like, okay, I'm sold. This is good. So we started going to a lot of shows together and um, one of my favorite shows during our, you know, when we were dating was seeing Ronnie James Dio at the Beacon Theater and that was in 2004. Anyone who knows me knows Dio is one of my favorites of all time. And um, this show was just hugely important to me on so many levels, but I, uh, it was at the beacon, and I kept on climbing onto Mark's shoulders. <laughs> it was like totally obnoxious. Like I don't know what I was thinking, I, and I know what I was thinking. I wanted Dio to like, hello, I love you. I wanted to tell him how much I loved him, but I definitely almost got us kicked out of the venue because I kept on, you know, they kept on saying "get down," and I would do it again. Get down. Third time, I finally gave up, and then I weaseled my way past security, went up to the front of the stage, and Dio held my hand for at least, it felt like forever, must have been a half a song, and um, changed my life. It was just seeing him live, and in the, the just he made everyone feel so special. He did. He genuinely did. So I want to play a little Dio now for you. Um, most of us, we love the first two albums. I mean, those are obviously the albums that we go to and we listen to all the time. But one of my other favorites is an album um, that came out a little later, Strange Highways. Many of you guys are probably familiar with it. It's dark and it's heavy and um, I really, really like it. I like seeing the angry side of Dio. It's kind of fun. And um, so up next here is the title track from the album, Strange Highways.
Good stuff, right? That was a little deal for you. So if you guys listened a few episodes back, I did a, a Black Sabbath tribute at Arlene's Grocery, and it was a blast. I was so honored to do it. And um, I there were two sets. There was an Aussie set and a Dio set. So, um, of course, my friend asked me to do the Dio set. A friend of mine named Andy Black Sugar, an amazing New York City guitarist, and he kind of... Um, curated the entire Dio piece. He's also a huge Dio fan. So yeah, so Andy is an insanely talented shredder and just a a prolific artist in in general. And I am not the only mega fan that he has. He has many fans, but I happen to follow Vernon Reed from Living Color. I think we're going to be interviewing him on Talking Metal pretty soon coming up here. Um, and one day on Twitter, I see someone ask him, you know, who, who's your favorite hard rock or metal guitarist? I don't remember exactly what the question was, but his response was basically, well, you know, I have many, but my, you know, two of my favorites are Alex Skolnick, of course, uh, of Testament fame and Andy Black Sugar. So I, I'm not alone in my fandom of, of Andy's playing. But if, if my recommendation and, and Vernon's recommendation isn't enough for you, I'm going to play you a track off of a cover album that he just put out of Joe Satriani's um, Surfing with the Alien. And, you know, he covered this extremely difficult piece of work. And not only did he manage to infuse it with his signature flair, he also recorded the entire thing by himself. No whammy bar using a, a, bass, a bass guitar with no D string. And he did it in five days. <laughs> it was just total madness. So I'm pretty sure that he, he would be the alien if there is um, such a thing. So enjoy. What I'm going to do here is um, his alter ego, Sheer Velocity, otherwise known as Andy Black Sugar, doing Ice Nine. All right, so that was Andy Black Sugar's rendition of Ice Nine off of Surf, his cover of Surfing with the Alien. Just an amazing um, cover album. I encourage all of you to check it out on Bandcamp. We will have all of the links in the show notes to not only where you can get this, but where you can get the rest of Andy's um, music. Black Sugar Transmission is his other band, and his website is blacksugartransmission.com. So make sure you check it out. He also has some guitar dueling instrumentals on SoundCloud, so we'll provide the those as well if you want to hear some amazing guitar shredding. Um, this is the place to go. So check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. <laughs> I hope you haven't all tuned out yet, but uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Talking Metal.